If you would please open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. And Nick, we're going to start in verse 17. <coughs> oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Not really. Just me and myself. Oh, yeah. Hey, turn on the mic. Yeah, there we go. Alright. We are in Ephesians chapter 4. We've been here for a while. And um, we started a few weeks ago about the new life and living the new life. And there's no nice way to say this. We're taking on a scalpel today. And that there's, there's the truth that we believe in, but sometimes you can take that truth and if you make it very specific, it can be like a turn from a sword to a scalpel real quick. And um, so Paul has been talking in generalities about some things and he's about to get very specific from here on out through the book. And so I want to remind us of where we were so you can we can start embracing some of these truths that he reveals to us. We're only going to look at verse 25 today because I figured that was enough uh, surgery for one day. Um, but we're going to read in verse 17 to kind of get the backdrop of what Paul's saying in Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore I say this. Hey, we're good. All right. Therefore I say this and testify in the Lord. You should no longer walk or behave as the Gentiles behave in the emptiness of the futility of their think, their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluding, excluded from the life of God. So they have no life. They just live in death because of the ignorance that is in them. And because of the hardness of their hearts, they became callous, gave themselves over to promiscuity, for the practice of every kind of impurity with a desire for more and more. This is how we used to live. We used to live, and that was the way we walked in the past. Uh, by the, it's, We really had no choice. It was, we were born with a, a leaning. If, we're, if you want to say, well, we're born with a blank slate, that's fine. But the slate's tilted. And it leads us to sin. And, in, and it's sin engrosses us in death and the thief doesn't just come to kill, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so there's a, a death that occurs in our lives when we live outside of God and His ways. Okay? Uh, which moses us on to verse 20. But that is not how you learn Christ. That is not how you learned about Him. Assuming that you heard about Him and you were taught by Him because the truth is in Jesus. You took off your former way of life just like a coat. You took it off. You laid it aside. Um, the old self being corrupted, which we just talked about, by deceitful desires. You're being renewed in the spirit of your minds and you're putting on the new self. And how is it created to be? According to God's likeness, in righteousness, in purity or holiness of the truth. True righteousness and purity of the truth. So we were one way. We were taught in Christ to live a new way, to take off that old way, to be changed the way we think and to put on the new person to create to be like God in true righteousness and the purity of the truth. So Paul at this point, he says, okay, I've told you what you're going to do now. Let's start getting specific. And we come to verse 25. Since you put away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. From, actually the, the Greek there is more than just lying. When we say lying, 
if we miss the true meaning of this word. Anybody have another word in their Bible? Besides lying? Falsehood. Much better. So living the new life from falsehood to truth. From falsehood to truth. Let's, let's deal with this a little bit. It, it's more than a lie. It's a false utterance. It, it's, it's not true. It's an old way that we live. But it, it's more than just something that you say. It's a way that you are. Um, it's truth in terms of morality. It's truth in terms of your ways. There's a right way and there's a false way. If you go back to the context of the entire scripture, there's two ways that we can go. A way of life and a way of death. A way of blessing, a way of cursing. A way of righteousness, right actions, and a way of wickedness. Not wrong actions, wickedness. That's what the scriptures say. Did you follow me? Do I don't need to repeat that. Because we live in a culture where there's a right way and there's, there's a wrong way, but that wrong way is what's related to what you think, not according to any truth. Truth is what you experience truth to be. Your truth may not be my truth. Okay, I want to tell you something. That's not what we're talking about. I think that's why we need to really look at this verse, and that's how we're only really talking about it to, to this verse. Years ago, a gentleman prepared us at Southern Baptist Convention, 1995. I was three years old. That's a lot. Anyway, <laughs> 1995. Maybe one of my kids is three years old. No, they're just poor. Anyway, man, Miss Joyce, we're getting old. Anyway, so the truth was, we're coming to a day and age where truth will no longer be absolute. Truth will become relative. And if you say that Jesus is the only way, you are a lying, right-wing, fundamental, fundamental bigot. That you would think that you were the only one who was right. This is not about being, quote-unquote, right or wrong. And that's the culture that we live. Because we're never wrong. We're not talking about that. We're talking about falsehood and truth. Wickedness and righteousness. And righteousness is not determined by me. Righteousness is determined by some standard of truth. In the end, we'll ask the Bible. Well, I'm going to go one step further than that. The standard of truth is a person. Somebody once said, I am the way, the... Truth. So the embodiment, or as God has put it, everything finds their purpose in Him. All things are held by Him. He defines all things. What is the truth about you? You don't have a right to even say that. You don't have the authority to say that. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. You don't have any authority to even say anything about yourself. How dare you? Jesus says, Lord, He has the right to determine who you are, not you. Amen. Amen. He determines who you are, not you, not me, not anybody else. Well, I think I'm Greg and Greg is just a punk. Well, what does that matter? I don't care what you say. Well, I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what I say. If Jesus saved me and He redeemed me, what I have to say is really irrelevant. That's right, because when he died on the cross, he had authority over all flesh. And he has the authority to give eternal life to whoever he wants. That'll preach. Now, he has that authority. That was John 17, by the way, verse 2. He has the authority. He defines truth. He determines what's truth. He's the one that does that. You used to walk in a way that you determined that. You don't do that any longer. You used to be in charge of your life. You used to tell yourself what you were going to do. You used to have opinions. You don't have those anymore. That's right. You don't have a right to them. You used to walk in the ignorance and foolishness of the world. You don't do that anymore. God has 
given you something great, something beautiful. He has given you truth. And not truth based on some philosophy or ideology, but based upon the person of His Son, who, by the way, is the Logos of God, and everything that was created was created from that mind, that Logos, the reasoning behind. When God said light, it was Jesus who defined light. It was Jesus who defined what it meant that man was in the image of God. He is the one that defines that. So as we sit here and we preach about truth this morning, we need to understand what truth really is. Truth is a person, and He defines you and everything about the world and everything else. You mean even those who aren't saved? Oh, yes. Yes. They don't get their own prerogative. It's not like, oh, well, you can have your little way over here. Well, yeah, you can. God's created a special place for that. It's called the lake of fire. Well, that's not very fair. It doesn't matter what's fair. It's God. Amen. He has been fair. He gave His only begotten Son. He didn't have to come. He could have just downed everybody. But in mercy and kindness, He revealed His Son at the perfect time. <laughs> Read the Bible and believe it and trust it and confirm it and follow it. Amen. Okay? Who? Stop thinking. Start believing and acting in faith. Amen. All right. Oh, I'm about to start preaching here in a minute. All right. <laughs> falsehood. What is a falsehood? It's anything that's not true. Have you ever... Yeah, this ain't nice. I'm coming down here a little bit. Have you ever said something that you didn't know what you were talking about? <laughs> Have you ever done that? And you're just running your mouth, just talking, and you ain't got a clue what you're talking about. And sometimes God in His mercy doesn't let anybody there that doesn't know what you're talking about, that knows you're not knowing what you're talking about. But occasionally, <clears throat> God will have someone there that has a clue, and they just say, oh, well, that ain't right. And you start crawfishing you, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And you try to say faith, and then they're going to say faith. Oh, boom! And they just whop you with the truth. We don't ever do that, do we? We don't ever say things and, and live. Well, and we, it would be great if we'd only do that once, or just like for 10 minutes. But what happens when we do that for like months? Years. You have this idea, it's a great idea, right? But you really don't know what you're talking about. You base your life on some plan. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to chase this American dream. I'm going to, I'm going to go to follow this way. And it's based upon what you think. And it's based upon what your desires are. Well, is there anything wrong with that? Well, is it true? Is it true? Well, well Reagan, what are you talking about? Honesty is not always the truth. Yeah, I don't like that statement, do you? Just because I'm a can't I'm be honest with you. You are a now. Now what is the next thing's coming out of my mouth? Hopefully. They're the truth, and if they're not based on Scripture, then what are they based on? I'll tell you what they're based on. Paul tells you. You should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk. They are darkened and their understanding excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. That's where it comes from. That's exactly where it comes from. And just because you're being honest doesn't mean you're telling the truth. It means that you're asserting your opinion and your right to be Lord over this situation. Hear this, church. Truth is what God says. He's going to get into that in Ephesians 5. How we should sprinkle one another with hymns and spiritual songs. Ooh! Not with garbage and junk and opinion. And Paul, right off the bat, I mean right off the cuff, 
He says, get rid of your falsehoods. Get rid of your own opinions or your own understanding of things. Don't step on the crack though. you break your mother's back. <laughs> and all, you know, we laugh at that, but there's other things that we bring in of ideas and ideologies that we have that are really not biblical. They're just of our own understanding of things. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That might be good, but it's not biblical. Amen. And we have all these other things in our minds that are patterns of our living that aren't Scripture. And I'm not trying to be ugly to you, but how you relate to God and how you relate to people, He doesn't do that based on what you think is really good. When we live according to our base senses, in our base attitudes, there is this mindset and ideology in our culture that says, if it works for me and it makes me feel good about my life, then you shouldn't judge me. You should be happy for me. Here's the problem with that. Number one, and let me start with Scripture because that's the way you need to do. Jeremiah 17, 9. You know that one? <laughs> uh, Y'all doing all right out there? Is the anesthesia wearing off? <laughs> the heart is more deceitful than anything else and incurable. Amen. Who can understand it? And let's just read verse 10 for fun. I, the Lord, examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each according to his way, according to what his actions deserve. Let me explain something to you. Let me give you some words that are not so nice. I don't love you anymore. I just don't have feelings for you anymore. And that could be in a marriage relationship, that could be in a church, that could be in family. I just don't have... Is that the truth? Yes. That's only the truth, partial truth. It's not totally wrong, it's just half right. Here's the real truth. Here's what you're really trying to say. Let me help you out. Here's what happened. See, in all actuality, what happened was, is I set my heart and affections to other things and other people. And I began to pour myself into other things and other people and began to put my heart in that area. Now I have affections for those things and those people and I no longer have heart and affection for you anymore. That's the truth. Now, what do I do? Well, depends on if you're a believer or not. What's an unbeliever do? A believer follows their feelings, follows their emotions. Because they don't have any truth. They're darkened in their understanding. They're callous in their hearts. What does the believer say? But the scriptures say, husbands, love your wives as Christ is the church. Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord. And each of you submit to one another out of reverence to the Lord. Amen. That's true. Amen. Hello. Right? Amen. See, we claim to know the truth. We claim to live by the truth, and we lie. That's a falsehood. That may be how you feel, but that's not the truth. Truth's the person. Truth would never do or say what you just said. That's right. 
See, and they see that. And see, you do that, and they think that's Jesus. You just presented a God that is not the God of the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Do you understand this? This is what Paul's saying. Quit being false. Amen. Stop living according to your flesh. That's how the world does. But you are not taught to do that in Jesus. You were told the truth. And the truth sets you free. So well, what do I do when I don't feel that way? Well, you need to do you need to start using this thing up here. What does that mean? Well, I need to cut out the affections, the other things that I have affections toward, get rid of that time, get rid of those things, get rid of those people. If it's a person, I've got to cut off their relationship. If it's a hobby, I gotta quit doing that hobby. Well, my soul, Brother Reagan, that's what I like to do. It doesn't matter what you like. It matters what you committed to. Preach! It matters what you've committed to. When you stand before God, I don't care what you like. He don't care. When he holds open his books, it's not going to happen. The book of hesitations. Well, here's the subsection on Reagan Reeves and what he liked. No! God is only concerned with His ways and His purposes and His plans. And if you have other ones, He's got a place for you. Amen. And it's not with Him. And you have to be careful, brothers, that you do not find yourself walking in your old ways with a Christian t-shirt on. Amen. Well, I love Jesus, but you're going the wrong way. You're saying Jesus, but you're walking in the ways of the world. And Paul's just like, people, you can't claim Christ, but continue the ways of the flesh and of Satan. Or James says that salt water doesn't come out of a freshwater spring. Or vice versa. You can't say that you have Jesus, but you've got the devil coming out. It don't work that way. Right. That's right. Phew. <laughs> See, there has to come a time where we have to start acting in truth. Now, let me explain something to you. It's not natural. See, because what I just said, just in that one example, there are millions of examples that I could use. Some of you would not be able to cut off your feelings and do the right thing. And some of us may have even counseled people to do the opposite of what I said. Well, you just don't understand the situation. I understand it perfectly. Truth was not in it. And see, the problem is, is we bring in our opinions and our feelings and all these things and we don't bring in truth. Because truth is that some legalistic crowbar that we beat people over the head with. Truth is a person who can come into that situation that you can't control and start penetrating the hearts of those individuals. And by the way, you have the authority in Christ to release the Holy Spirit on those people for Him to do that. Do you realize that? Your, your friend, your child, your neighbor, your brother, whoever, go in their own way and you can't change them. You know how stubborn they are. But you can come to, to the throne of God and say, I can't get them but with you. In fact, I bind everything around them that's keeping them. I pray that you would bind their affections toward these other things. And I loose your spirit to convict them of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. Draw them. Call them. Make them miserable. And you know what happens? You've just loosed heaven on that person. And you need to watch and see it. See, that's what we're called to. We're called the truth. Not falsehoods. 
And there's a, this verse doesn't give me the freedom to just spout my opinion. What this verse gives me the freedom is to align myself with God's Word and to proclaim that to others. Amen. Look what it says. Speak to one another in this way. Speak to one another in truth. If I have a problem with Ken, I would say it like this. Ken, you are a man of God and a child of God. God's caused you to walk in true righteousness and holiness. But I see you're struggling in this. Let me come alongside of you to help. What can I do? How can I pray for you? And building that relationship to the point that I can come in that way. Or vice versa. Amen. Why? Because we're still in chapter 4 and we're still talking about the unity of the church and the unity of the Spirit. And that's why we're here together to grow to be mature. <laughs> you see how that works? And then he's just being specific. If there's falsity among you, get rid of it. Lay it aside. If you have a wrong belief about things, you need to take it off. If you have a, a bad feelings towards somebody, you need to take them off. And lay them aside. Jesus said that I need to be in unity. Jesus said we need to be at peace. Jesus said I need to love. And then, okay, that's changing my thinking. That's not the way that I think about them. <laughs> right? And I don't know a certain I need you to pray for me because I think Ken's blah, 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 blah. No, you don't do that either. You come to the Lord, you confess your sin, that you're not aligned with the truth that He says about Ken. And then you're able to move forward. Then you're able to put on the attitude that you need to have towards Ken, the attitude you need to have towards your family, the attitude you need to have towards your neighbor. Because remember, the truth is, you've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You've got to love one another as Christ loved you and gave himself for, for you. So you should have the same love for one another. John 13, 32, and 33. Right? Amen. That's the truth. See, the truth isn't anything what you thought the truth was. <laughs> no, that's the ways of the world. I can go to the bar and hear that and stuff. I shouldn't hear it in here. I'm going to work and hear that and go to the mall, go sit down with my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Right? Complain about each other's husband. Is that true? Well, it's true, but is it true? <coughs> See, here's the thing. If you're not living in truth, you don't have the life God wants you to have, even if you're saved. And I don't want it good for you. I don't want you to feel good. See, when we live by our passions, our flesh, we feel good. Well, that makes me feel good. I feel good when I do that. Well, it's wrong. But I feel okay, so it should be okay, right? There's a difference between feeling good and being good. There have been times when I have done the right thing and I did not feel good. Amen. But at the end of it, it didn't matter how I felt. I felt right. Amen. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. I felt like I was right. <laughs> but there's a difference when you know that you've done right. And there's a confidence and assurance and something that you never have when you follow your feelings. And it's beautiful. It's called peace. Amen. Amen. You never have that when you follow your feelings. You're always unsettled. You're always restless. You don't know. You can't sleep. But when you align yourself to the truth, you're placing yourself in the hands of someone else. You're not depending on your own reasoning and thinking. So let me sew up the, the incision. <laughs> I 
Ken said, please. <laughs> please. Are you following your own opinion, your own ideals, your own attitude? Are you just doing whatever you want to do? And you're asking God, you're praying about it and asking God to help you do what you're doing and asking Him to bless it. Or are you diligently studying God's Word? To know the truth. So that when you encounter circumstances, you're changing your pattern of behavior, your manner of speech, your manner of motives, to align to God's Word. But lay aside falsehood. Lay aside the lies. Lay aside the half-truths. And let's put on Christ. That's what we were created to be. Are you doing that? Are you thankful that it reaches before the Lord's Supper? What do you need to talk about to God about right now? In this moment where we've laid open the heart, what needs to be corrected now? Don't wait till you get home. Don't, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow. No, you won't. You know you won't. The reason you say that is because you've encountered this before and you said the same thing for years. Put aside falsehood and speak the truth. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Draw to the door. I don't need to be saved. I am saved. But you're living like a lost person. And you know it. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a mess. I got my own stuff I got to deal with. <laughs> deal with it today. Don't even see. If you need to come to the altar, pray. But don't leave the same way. Rip that callus off. If you need someone to be there with you, I'll pray with you. You were called to be Jesus. Live it. Let's pray again. Lord, thank you for truth. And I thank you that truth isn't based on what I think, because truth would change a lot. But Lord, truth is based on the person of Christ and the word that you've given us. That really just embodies him. So Lord, we come to you and I pray that you would break us. We've talked about revival today. We've talked about awakening. This is where it begins. Is where we align ourselves to your train of thought. So in this moment, Lord, I pray that you would help us to have the thinking that you want us to have. And Lord, convict us and, and lead us in the areas where that needs to be, whether it be with our family, whether it be with our church, whether it be with a person, maybe with a, a habit or a way that we spend our money, a way that we spend our time. And Lord, we've uh, rationalized and we've done all these things about it. But we know the truth. <clears throat> Give us grace to submit. And Lord, help us to live in accountability to one another. Love you, thank you. Amen. Would you